This video was made possible with support from viewers like you. If you find this video useful, consider becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a month at patreon.com forward slash fast gadgets. <laughs>
off-peak times, so I set in times where I didn't want the computer to reboot. I think it was 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. or something like that. And it was actually 9 p.m., so I was really freaked. I was thinking, oh my god, it's going to reboot. It actually did not reboot, but when I decided it was time to uh, be done with my work and shut down the computer and I was going to reboot back into Linux, the thing actually took another 20 to 30 minutes to install the updates. Then I thought, you know, I don't want to get a nasty surprise when I boot it up the next time into Windows. So I booted it into Windows, and it only took about three minutes at that point to boot into Windows, and it was done with the updates. But, again, the Windows Update service was turned on. So I've got it disabled. There's my watch talking to me again. I've got it disabled. I'm going to shut down the VM. And we'll go ahead and do a reboot. And see what happens. I'm curious to see if that service is re-enabled upon reboot. So this is literally just driving me nuts. The other thing is... When I brought up this virtual machine yesterday to get prepared for this video, guess what happened? The service was re-enabled. We're going to check right now. Let's go into the Services app. Cruise down to Windows. Date. Okay, it's still disabled. Somehow or another, it becomes enabled. So this system I had set for disabled when I booted up my virtual machine yesterday. Guess what happened? Well, it was a total dog. So it was trying to do the updates, and it gave me a message letting me know the updates were being downloaded. And I would literally click on the Windows flag here and nothing would come up. It took it maybe, I would say three to four minutes for it to come up. So what I did decide to do, I went into my machine, into the settings, the virtual machine, and I went to system, changed total memory to four gigabytes. It had two gigabytes prior. Gave it, it had one CPU before, I gave it four CPUs. Execution cap was already set at 100%, so that was correct. And that's about it. Those are the settings that I changed, that I made. And, it, you know, it's, of course, responded very fluid now. It's, it's much better in comparison to what it was. Um, but it was really the updates. Now, looking at processing on the actual host machine, which is my Fedora 27 system, I've got, oh, 20% CPU in use, so not that awful much. If I go into Task Manager here on this system, really not a whole lot going on. I think it's funny that it took 67% processing just to bring up Task Manager. What about when I wiggle the mouse? Eh, not too bad. What about when I do this? Yeah, there we go. 18% processing just to move a box on the screen. So here's my thinking. Um, what kills me is the fact that you're held hostage by Windows 10 when it does these updates. And they're quite mandatory. It doesn't really give you any choice anymore. Although it did not restart, which I'm really grateful for that because I wanted to finish my work. Um, but I'm my thinking is I'm trying to get into the so-called Linux ecosystem as much as possible. And at this point, I'm probably at, I would say, 90% of the time. Actually, I would say even more, about 95% of the time I'm doing uh, Linux-based work. Um, so I'm editing a video, um, you know, using the applications. So I've got my favorites here. 
I'll show you. Uh, favorite web browser, Firefox, or like we talked about in my previous video, Waterfox. So I need to change out this icon. I've just been launching it from the desktop. My video editor, uh, GIMP, which I've been using quite a bit. Uh, I actually used it more than I thought I would. Um, a sound recorder, OBS, handbrake from time to time, system settings, file manager, terminal, uh, virtual machines, word processing, system monitor. Uh, there are other tools that I use, but these are probably the ones I use most often, so I stuck it in my favorites. I'm going to install Audacity. Um, that is a great audio editor, so I need to install that as well. But the long and the short of it is, I'm thinking I don't want to sit there and be held hostage by my computer every time I boot it into Windows, and I don't want to have to wait 30 to 40 minutes for it to do whatever it is it's going to do. I think I'm going to reboot this again. Maybe I'll power it off. I don't know if that'll make any difference. Let's find out. Now, I know there are other ways uh, to disable the Windows Update, but they are very convoluted and quite a bit of work. If it's going to come to that, I would basically say I'm, I'm resigned to letting Windows do its updates. But when I boot up the computer, you see right now it's coming up really fast, perfectly fine, very cool. That's what I need when I boot into Windows, whether it's on hardware or a virtual machine. Put in my password. Awesome. Uh, let's load Task Manager, see how busy it is. About 33% CPU usage right now, 23% here. Let's go back into Services. I can't spell. There we go. And cruise back down to Windows Update Manager. Still disabled. I don't know how it's re-enabling itself, but it starts to do the downloads. Once that happens, you know, you just log in basically and it says downloading updates. So it must be a timed thing, a, a service or a process that does the update check and once it does that it turns on Windows Update. So let's see if we can look at Windows Update settings because this is a different account now. I'm thinking it ran into that problem because of what I did. Check out advanced options. Yeah on my other account I'm pretty sure I had it set to notify to schedule it. Now I have heard also that people are turning on a metered connection for your standard network interface, which is an idea I might try. Now where, I wonder if I just don't have a new enough version here. Because I don't see the scheduling that I can do where I can schedule it. So this virtual machine might not be new enough. Um... It's not going to be any of these. Let's see if we can figure out what version of Windows we're running right now. All right, I've got build 10 586.104 version 1511. Honestly, I don't even know what the current version of Windows 10 is. Seventeen oh nine. So where am I at on this one? Let's see. Fifteen eleven. Twelve twelve two thousand seventeen. So it's not really. Oh, availability four eight two thousand sixteen. Latest revision was on twelve twelve, and it just installed some kind of updates. So, so I'm over here on fifteen eleven. Microsoft recommends semi-annual channel 1709, so I haven't done that, of course. 
Um, but the whole thing of it is, my thinking is, I really want to be able to continue using the computer even if Windows has to take a powder and go through a update. So my thoughts are I'd be much better off using a virtual machine when I do have to use Windows and use Office. And if I'm at work and I absolutely have to use Windows, they have control because it's a corporate environment. They have control of Windows so I never have to see the updates ever, which is a really good thing. I really like that. But I want to be more and more and more into the Linux ecosystem, which begs to ask the question, what am I going to do with all my Mac stuff? <laughs> I still love Macs. Invariably, I'm going to be grabbing a the Yoga 910 or this computer and working on Linux when I'm here. When I'm at school teaching, I usually take the Yoga 910 because I can boot into either Linux or Windows, but my preference is Linux, so I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with the Mac stuff. Um, I love doing Mac stuff, and I do use it from time to time. I've got a video coming out on the uh, 4K editing with Mac, and it's to me it's fascinating how good iMovie works with the Mac and I'll go through all that in my video is coming out in the next few days but in all honesty I'm thinking a virtual environment is the answer for me because I don't really play any games um, the ones I do are very few I do have a couple that I need to go into Windows to play so I do have a dual boot set up on this system and I can boot into Windows if I need to but my thoughts are I'm going to try to be in Linux most of the time. Now, this is nothing new for me. I used VirtualBox and ran Windows in VirtualBox. I started becoming a full-time Linux user because even with the job I had back then, I still needed to do some Windows stuff. It would have been 2008. So what I did was install Linux and then I put a Windows virtual machine on my system. So anything I had to do in Windows I did in the virtual machine. But overall, the majority of the stuff that I did was strictly Linux because I was managing servers, uh, mostly Red Hat servers. Well, actually, they were CentOS or they were Fedora. And so the majority of the stuff I was doing was in Linux or it was a virtualized machine, whether it was Windows or Linux or whatever. So I think I'm going to go ahead and go back to the virtualized environment for Windows. So whatever I have to do, I'll do in a VM. And I'll probably take this VM and put it on my Yoga 910 as well because... At least that way I can still do some kind of work while I'm waiting for the darn thing to go through its updates and annoy me and basically take over my life. What do you think about this? So Windows 10, 15, 11, I'd be curious to hear what version you guys are on. So there has been some revisions. Would you recommend upgrading your VM here? I'm sure if I do that service is going to be on all the time. I don't know if, if see, I just don't know how it got updates and how the service got turned back on on this version, but it did because I always disable that. And I wasn't really expecting that. So I guess what's your opinion? Anybody on version 1709? And if so, what do you think about it? Is there anything feature-wise that I would be missing if I stuck around with 1511? Curious to hear your thoughts on that and what you think about trying to be as much in the Linux ecosystem with quotations, air quotes, as possible. And if you're using Linux, what are you doing when you have to do Windows stuff? And are you doing gaming or are you doing um, more production work or something that you have to do that's work related? Would be curious to hear from you as usual. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time on Fast Gadgets.